it's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day. These are not refugees from Syria. These are refugees from uh, neighboring Ukraine. These are um, Christians, they're white. These are prosperous middle-class people. These are not people trying to get away from areas in North Africa. They look like any European family that you would live next door to. This is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. As far back as 2014, the relationship between Ukraine and Russia started degenerating. Eventually, Russia invaded Ukraine, causing Europe's largest refugee crisis since World War II, displacing over 8 million Ukrainians. Various Western media channels covered the crisis, but a new conversation was born when some news reporters used the word civilized in differentiating refugees. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, a uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. These people, the Ukrainians, they're like us. They watch Netflix, they have Instagram accounts. To understand the context of what they meant, we looked up the definition of the word uncivilized, of a place or people not considered to be socially, culturally, or morally advanced. According to the UN Refugee Agency, refugees are people who have fled war, violence, conflict, or persecution and have crossed an international border to find safety in another country. One of the major refugee crises in recent times was caused by the Syrian war in 2011, displacing more than 13 million people into neighboring borders of Arab and European countries. In the end of 2015, the government of Canada resettled 25,000 Syrian refugees on its land, providing them a safe place to call home. About 4,000 of them settled here in Calgary. We decided to interview four of those refugees, taking an up-close and personal look into their lives. My name is Mohammed al -Dahir. I'm from Syria. I'm married. I have my wife and five kids. My name is Sliman al -Dib. I'm 29 years old. I'm a writer, director, an actor, professional photographer. My name is Dima. I'm from Syria. I am Abara Table Tennis Athlete. I got many medals in my country and also here in Canada. My name is Abdul Fattah Sabouni. I'm the owner of Aleppo Savon factory. When, why did you come to So I came in on 2015. 2016. 2016. 2017. Why? Because of the war. Everything, uh, it was uh, great. When the war is coming, we miss our factory. We're looking to find a place that's safe for us, for my family. We left everything, money is come back, but the life is important. What were the challenges you faced? The first things, you know, the language is important. When I came here, I came uh, with uh, zero English. I started trying to uh, get into the arts from the moment I entered Canada. Arts in, in general depend on the connections what you have. And I don't know anybody that was like a little bit hard at the beginning. When I arrived to Calgary, I sat with my wife and talking about the future. You and um, we have experience about agriculture. I should to try. On the internet, I asked for Table Tennis Canada coach. At that time, my English is so bad. We have somebody that they said, until now, you don't have a, a perfect English. It's not easy to enter a new country and different culture, different language, everything different. At that time, I was going to the arts common, looking around and asking myself, how can I get into the arts? After three days, I started to plant backyard. I have free time. What I should do? I don't like to sit. No, I like to work. After one month, it was huge. Oh. I was very happy. When I came, I bring with me 20 kg of soap. And after a couple of months, I start making the soap at home in my kitchen. And the customer follow me everywhere. That time, uh, I told myself 100% uh, I need to open the business. 
When I opened uh, the factory in Canada, the only Aleppo soap making in North America. Ignite Festival, they offered to me like 15 minutes exactly. I was like, what should I do to make non-Arabic speakers feel what the refugees felt? What I did is the opposite. Taking Canadian as refugees back home, so the opposite thing. I was like, I'll put them in a refugee camp from table to table, and then after the light comes off and I go to the stage. Syria resettled more than 25,000 Canadian refugees. Canada was facing one of the most difficult war ever. You have nothing. You have to learn Arabic. You have to find a job. You're going to be lonely because most of your friends have been killed. So it changed their perspective completely of the Middle Eastern people or the refugees in general. Directly, I put a strategy for five years. I know it's hard work, but if you like it, will be easy. You see, my kids are playing around me and my wife working side by side. That's why I like it. If you put your business in your head and your mind, you will success. Most of the shows I did, the four shows, was about struggling and about the refugees in general. I started getting to know people step by step. I had like many interviews as a Syrian Canadian artist in the city. It's for me, uh, it's absolutely not. A lot. <laughs> I will be honest, they are wonderful. It's, it's a little bit hard at the beginning. The first day when I arrived to Canada, uh, I got, uh, you know, helping, you know, from people I didn't know him before. And after that, I opened uh, my business. Every country, when you enter the country as a refugee, they have the all negative thing about your uh, about yourself or about your countries. What what I need, I need to show the people that the refugee can do, that the refugee can make a change on the community. I know it's so hard for me as a woman on the wheelchair, a Muslim woman, but I never give up. I never slow down. Every time, just thinking about to have a solution to complete. I started last year to build greenhouses. Someone, he brought uh, his uh, truck, big truck, to push all my greenhouses. He drove all on uh, my brothers. All Canadians stood beside me, from Quebec, Montreal, uh, BC. Uh, we are beside you. When I listen to that, oh, I'm feeling glad. That's why I keep going, because I know what's around uh, me. How do you feel when someone points the things that you have said refugees? The first year, 2016, it was painful and I was ashamed. But right now, I feel it like as a strength. When somebody called me like a refugee from Syria, I was like, yeah, I am. I am, I'm a strong person. On the beginning is sad, but that's not your choice. I am a refugee because I have a war in my country. That's, I think, everybody will thinking about before make a judge about the refugee. It's something different. I left everything back home and I came into here, so that's a point of strength for me. And right now, I'm like, I'm the founder and the artistic director of Kawali's Act, which is the Arab Canadian theater in, in the town, which is a huge success for me, so yeah. We showed our interviewees the news clips describing refugees and asked what they thought about it. So are not refugees from Syria. European people with blue eyes. The Ukrainians, they're like us. They have Instagram accounts. <laughs> I'm so sad uh, for what I watched. It uh, absolutely is not good. It's funny and, and sad at the same time. I um, believe this is for all people. To be honest, I, I heard this video before and I don't like to hear it again. People, they should educate themselves a lot, a lot.
they don't know how the refugee Syria Syrian refugee how they live I live with my family five years inside the war when my son need to sleep he can't sleep I try to put my fingers in his ear just to make him sleep because the bombing the fighting the everything that he's scared I didn't think I remove my city one meter the reason for the Syrian uh, going, they worry about the kids, they worry about the life. اللي صار بأوكرانيا إنه شيء جديد على الأوروبيين. هن متعودين إنه أفريقيا and Middle East هن أساس الحروب. ما مستاهل الحياة. طيب مين عطاك الحق لتعطيني هالتوصيف؟ مين عطاك الحق؟ مين بحب الموت؟ أي واحد بحب الحياة بس هيك مفرض علينا. When you work with any people, you work as a human, as a human rights, not as a Christian or Muslim or Ukrainian or Syrian or wearing a hijab or not wearing a hijab. Nobody accepts us, but they ask us to accept everybody. Do you know, I feel like I, I, I need to, to cry about that, that, this racism, but at the same time, I feel very strong because we need, we need to change. It's Ukraine, it's not refugees from Syria. What exactly the wrong with the refugees from Syria? It's like they have an Instagram. Well, I do have an Instagram and Facebook from a long time before I came to Canada. But they're not Muslim. What are you talking about? Do you know Muslim people? It was a, a shock to them. I was like, what? Like, are you Christian from Syria? There is Christian people over there? I was like, what are you talking about? Jesus came in from the Middle East. He didn't come from USA. We cannot stay on silent and say like, oh, I don't want to talk about these things. It will cause problem. No, we have to speak up and talk about it. I met uh, with the guys. They told to me, I hope to meet you because I, I saw many people that's speaking about you and your family. I told him, what, what's speaking about? They speak about your laughing. How that's the smiling is still in your face. I told to them because if I'm, I'm not challenging myself, I can't challenge the barriers that I face it. When I came, a lot of people helped me and helped all re uh, Syrian refugees. So 10% from um, uh, our brothers to food bank. From first year to now. Also, I need uh, to give uh, Canada back even small things. We sell the soap and uh, we give back uh, Red the Cross uh, 25%. What's your next step? <sighs> next step. It's a good, good question. <laughs> yeah, I'm preparing a lot of stuff to, to the future. I'm planning to do a tour for the opposite. Once we got the funding for that, I'll be happy to do a tour around Canada. To be a big arrest farm in Calgary. My farm, it's opening all days to the people, they coming directly to my farm and pick up their self. To uh, expand yes. our Canadian company, Alipo Savon, now. To make an organization to help the refugee, people with disability, every the organization they, that work with a newcomer or a refugee, they don't focus about the disability. This is hard, hard for me. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Whatever dream you have, whatever passion you hold inside, continue to fight for it. If you have any goal or a dream to start right now, you can't wait until tomorrow. Whenever you are, just make a change. Don't let anybody to broke your dreams. I'm talking about all refugee or newcomer. Give him a chance. Stand beside him. Don't judge, judge a refugee if you don't live their, their life. I will send a uh, send message to my wife. Thank my wife for everything because she gave me support. Come to give me a hug. Time in home, in home, in home. I'll you Thanks for here. Thank you. My money, my money. She sold the cucumber.